Like my politics, don't buy my book. Problem solved. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Pop Culture Rocks, and you know who I am. That's all right, homies. Let's get to it, man. Uh, you know who this is, too, don't you? Well, let's go figure it out together. Different version of Carol Danvers in Captain Marvel and made the Carol core happen. She's also the genius writer behind Bitch Planet. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Now, superhero comics at their core, they're, they're built on the foundation of, you know, the, the strong, you know, the big strong heroes go in and help the little guys, the people yes. who are oppressed. Yeah, man, let's go. Let's go help the little guys, the people that are oppressed. And remember, if you don't like my politics, don't read my comics. Guess what? They heard you. Now, it took a little while to sink in, but people like Kelly Sue DeConnick here. Hold on now. Let me bring this, this Strag's picture up. I want you to take note of a couple of things now. Look at, look, got the problem glasses. Got the problem glasses. Got the weird hair here with the rat coloring on the bottom, the pursed up mouth, and the really fucking bad attitude. Really bad attitude. Because if you don't like my book, don't read my comics. Let's, uh, let's let this play for a little bit, man. I think a lot of you haven't seen this, and a lot of you don't understand that when this guy right here, this interviewer, <clears throat> I don't know who he is, and I'm not trying to go in on him, but when your criteria for a brilliant writer is Kelly Sue DeConnick, you need to reevaluate what you think is brilliant. Essentially what feminism is about. Yes, exactly. Right? This is this is always when people are like, would you please get your politics out of my comic books? I'm like, what comic books are you reading? This is, uh, <clears throat> this is a writer. It's the Carol Corps, y'all. Carol Danvers. And the book that keeps failing and failing and failing. The Miles Morales book that keeps failing and failing and failing. The uh, little stretchy Muslim girl whose book keeps failing and failing and failing. The agenda that exists right now in Hollywood uh, is clear. And that is anything but the Hugh Whiteness. No Hugh Whites. You don't have to be strong to be a hero. You could just be emotionally available. And you're a fucking hero. That leaves bad taste in my mouth just saying it. <laughs> fucking disgusting. Disgusting! Let's go listen to this uh, motherfucker talk a little more. Where is the apolitical comic book that you're reading? Like, I want to go back to the comic books we were reading in my youth. The 70s, when they were incredibly political. Except they weren't. Except they weren't. You might get one out of 50, one out of 100 that was overtly political. Everybody told stories, plain and simple. And yes, you can even say that people told stories about the times. What they didn't try to do was invert reality. I think people are slowly waking up to the idea that the reality that they believe is theirs is not really theirs. That's an unfortunate thing. But when you get ideologues like Kelly Sue DeConnick running up and uh, producing comic books and writing comic books, they are writing themselves and the reality that they experience. It's not real. It's the reality that they experience. They're writing that into the book. And they're hoping that you jump on board and come and get some. And not even... Or you go back to this, the Ditko Spider-Man yes. issues, which was, he was, Peter Parker was getting bullied and, yes. and traumatized at school. Okay, but is that uh, political? Getting bullied and traumatized at school? Traumatized? No, you just got beat up. And if you didn't stand up for yourself, motherfuckers would line up around the corner to have a go at you. If you didn't have somebody that was standing up for you. You see, if you didn't have one of those two things or both, you was in trouble. You are still in trouble today if you don't have one or two of those things. There's still ridiculous bullying. There's now online bullying. You know, I do not support censoring speech of any kind. If somebody is online and they're giving you the business, hit the button. Go to something else. That's how that works. Censorship does not make you freer. 
ever. Yes, I'm sorry to break this to you, but Captain America is a social justice warrior. I know you mean that as a, as a, as an. No, he's not. Captain America, first and foremost, fought the Nazis in Germany, fought the Nazis on American soil, and fought foreign and domestic terrorists. He was a symbol of the United States, the best part of the United States, not the evils of this country. There are a lot of evil, evil people, evil organizations, corrupt institutions in this country. If you haven't seen my video on twit twat, Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey uh, being complicit with these things, then maybe you should take a look at that one too. There's a lot of evil about this country. There's a lot of good about this country. You can't have one without the other, plain and simple. At least not in my lifetime, you can't. Kelly Sue DeConnick is not just wrong, she's lying. She's a fraudulent individual. Captain America was not a social justice warrior. He was a symbol for the might, strength, and projection of America. Plain and simple. And that has changed, obviously. And then when you have goofballs like this come in there with their rat stink colored hair, talking about, hey, Captain America, first social justice warrior. No, 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 no. Then you hand it over to Ta-Nehisi Coates. <sighs> Going through some issues with the comic industry. Insult. But there's just no, like, that is the definition of what what he is, you know? And if all you want to read are, I don't know, books about, I, I literally can't. That's right. She can't because she's struggling to, she's struggling to get that hamster wheel turning round and round. Let's get off of that and let's get on to this one right here. Hmm. What do we have here? They will tell you that the comic book numbers are the best that they've ever been. Billions, billions. But they won't tell you that a gigantic portion of that is now manga. Now manga. P.O.S. Not piece of shit. Point of sale. Come on. Get your minds out of the gutter. Tracking giant NPD book scan. Put out a list of top 20 adult graphic novels for the month of uh, November 2022 in the United States. 19 of the 20 spots occupied by manga volumes with Tatsuki Fujimoto's Chainsaw Man, volume number one, topping that list. Kaboom. And there he is, the Chainsaw Man himself. Look at this list. Come on, look at this list. Where are you at, Americans? Where's the American comic industry? Oh, that's right. The American comic industry is doing great. It's incredible. They're just going bankrupt. Aftershock, bankrupt. IDW trading for under a dollar. Under a dollar. Marvel and DC not doing well at all. Image Comics, Valiant, not doing good at all. But comics, mm, comics that are not created by these people, hmm, like Ethan Van Skyver, are doing incredible. And they're not having to produce nearly as much. And they're doing incredible. They're slowing down the pace and making more. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shane Davis, John Malin, Eric July. <sighs> Gang, Isaac Bell, Alexa Lowe. All of these folks out here are making really, really good money. Really good money. Doing their own things, selling their own books. And why? Why can't Spider-Man sell a good book anymore why can't superman and batman sell a good book oh i know what you're gonna say but the batman's the top seller and blah 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 yeah the other 20 variations of batman are too it's batman it's batman motherfucker right 
if you put a pig in a Batman costume and gave him an arch nemesis that was a pitchfork, it, it'd sell half a million copies out of sheer morbid curiosity. But it's not doing what it should be doing, not even close. And there's reasons for that. Do we know what the reasons are? I bet, I bet you we do. Does it have anything to do with uh, identity politics? I bet it does. Does it have anything to do with forcing sexuality down people's throats and forcing them to accept things that are against their nature and against their religions? Uh, I bet it does. I bet it does. Because when you try to force them, guess what? Eh, they don't have to do it. So they uh, they put your book down, they take their money and dedicate it somewhere else, or they just don't spend it. That's how that goes. <clears throat> I support the indie creators out here. I buy their products. I loved, when I was a kid, when I was younger, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, yes, even Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Robin. I loved the villainy that came with all of them. All of them. Ghost Rider, Blue Devil, Iron Man. These are the comic books that I read when I was young. And I loved them. Had a topsy-turvy relationship with comic books. Over the last eight years or so, ten years, it's been real topsy-turvy. Uh, so much so, in fact, that I decided to put them all away. I don't collect mainstream comics anymore. All I do is collect back issues up to a certain point before this ideological uh, infantilization, this mind virus got into everything. As far as I'm concerned, it's one big dead void. It's a bunch of skin suits that put on ideology and they say that I'm Spider-Man. They say that I'm Superman. They say that I'm Batman, but they're not. They're so completely counter to what Supes, Batman, Spidey is. You wouldn't recognize them if you took the fucking suits off. You wouldn't recognize them. Man, who's that motherfucker? Well, give me a quote. What did he say last week? Man, I don't recognize that. It's not truth, justice in the American way anymore. It's not Batman, the ultimate detective anymore. You know, it's not your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, enough said anymore. It's we got to fight world pollution. We got to go get on the rainbow bandwagon. We got to start endorsing these folks so they can pick up kids. And that's what they're doing. And that's a line too, too far for me to cross. I'm not doing it. It's a bridge too far. So I support Cyber Frog. I support Graveyard Shift. I support Inglorious Rex. I support Isom. And soon I'll be supporting my book when my book comes out. <clears throat> I have to thank the comic industry at large for not just shooting itself in the feet, but amputating its legs. I have to thank them for that because if they hadn't done that, if they had stayed on their fucking square, they'd done what they were supposed to do, guys like me wouldn't be able to get in you see i could, could i go make a book sure i could go make a book is there a chance that it would crack six figures no that's not the case anymore i have no doubt in my mind when i launch my book when i start making you all you the paying customer aware of what's going on out here in the world with this book we're gonna do well i know that we're gonna do well and I know that you're going to love the story. And you ain't got no choice but to love the art. Because that, that man is top notch. Yes, it's a man. Uh-oh, where's your diversity hammer? I appreciate the hell out of y'all. Thanks for popping in on this one. And I'd like to tell you, stay tuned, man. Because we got more for you today.